One of the things that I do when I'm driving is I, I run through my sermon for the week. I mean, it, it's, if I'm going to have to get up here and preach without notes, I better be able to think about it without notes. So if I have a good long drive ahead of me, I often say, oh, this is a good time for me to kind of run through the sermon this week and to think about it. So it was a Thursday, and I was meeting some other pastors uh, for uh, lunch over in St. Louis. And I'm like, oh, good. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I left uh, the church, and I started to head to St. Louis. Uh, and um, uh, I got about a couple of blocks away, and, and I just was like, yeah, I'm just not in the mood for it. Instead, I'm going to listen to a podcast. So I'm trying to do that thing like, hey, Siri, blah, 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 you know, talk to my phone to make it, and it just wasn't working. And, and then, like, I got to a stoplight, and so then I'm pulling up my phone, I'm friend, I got to get this thing going, and, and I was messing with it, and then, like, it kind of started to work, and, and just before I got on the highway, it, it, it seemed to be working, but I was still kind of thinking about it, and, um, and then I get, you know, go down the exit, at exit 12, up by the mall, getting on 64, headed towards St. Louis then, and it about a couple of miles down the road, I'm in a situation where here's my car, and there's another car that's maybe, a, maybe two cars linked ahead of me, and then there's another car that's kind of diagonal up ahead of them. So it's me, that, and that. And we're all, we're going. I mean, it's, you know, how you drive speed limit plus two or whatever your number is, plus five, plus nine. I don't know what you do with your life. But we're going at that speed, that speed limit plus your choice. When all of a sudden, this, this uh, uh, brown car comes flying up and, and goes between my car and the other. There's maybe, it's maybe like a car and a half length in between us. It comes whipping across. I'm sure this car is hitting triple digits on miles per hour. As, and then it comes over here. And I remember thinking in my mind, I don't think they're going to make it. Like, I know what they're trying to do. I don't think they're going to make that little, between these two cars, that little thing. And they, but woo, they gave it a try. And, um, and when they got over there, they must have hit the wheel hard to come back. And when they did, their car went on two wheels. Yeah, it just whipped back and went up on two wheels. And they hit the car in front of them with the bottom of their car. It's like this, and they hit it. They hit that car in front of them. That car starts to spin off the side of the road, and then the car that was on two wheels and had hit it suddenly starts flipping towards me. Now, there's some moments in your life where you call on Jesus. But not only that, there's moments in your life that move in slow motion. Have you ever had that experience where like, uh, uh, like maybe you're in a car and it's like everything goes into slow motion? I mean, it doesn't actually. I don't know if you knew that. It doesn't actually go into slow motion. What happens is your brain understands time because it's used to you noticing things at a certain rate. Chunk, chunk, chunk. And that's the passing of time. And when suddenly your brain goes into fear mode and goes, Oh, we need to pay more attention. Take in more input. Dun, 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 and it's hitting your brain with more information. Your brain doesn't change its clock. It just goes, oh. And so it feels like to you, things are slowing down because per second, you're taking in more information because there's all kinds of these things that are flowing in your system in that moment. And that's what happened. It's like everything went into slow-mo and this car was going, vroom, vroom, vroom. I don't really remember exactly what I did in that moment, but it involved jumping over to this lane as the car was like this. And then I noticed that the car that was in front of me in this lane was moving way too slow for the maneuver I was trying to pull off. And so I, you know, I mean, I think I checked the mirror to come back to the middle lane, but I just was like in that don't, don't die mode, right? And so I just whip back into here and I was past it. Nothing happened. I got past it. And then there was a shoe in the middle of the road. Now, this is ahead of the accident. I don't think a shoe came from one of those cars and flew that far down, but there was a shoe. And I can tell you, it was a mid level high Nike tennis shoe. It was red trim with white in the main part. The blacks, the swish on it was a black swish. 
I can tell you every detail about this shoe, the angle it was in the road, all the colors of it. Why? Because brain was doing everything in slow mo. And I thought, oh no, should I run over the shoe? Yeah, it's a ridiculous thing. I agree. Because then the other part of my brain went, the shoe's the least of your worries, Rob. Go. So I ran over that shoe. It, and then I just think about that stupid podcast. I think about what if I had decided a little bit later in my journey to try to get that going? What if I would have decided that when I got on the highway is when I was going to fiddle with that a little bit and I didn't have full attention? Do you know why I made it through that incident? I made it because my main focus, at least at that moment, was on driving. But it's so easy to get distracted, isn't it? There's a phone call, there's something, something fell down, you want to change the temperature, whatever. But thanks be to God, in that moment, I happened to be focusing on driving, which is what you're supposed to focus on when you're driving. That's why they call it driving. I wasn't podcast listening my way to St. Louis. I was supposed to be driving. It, life has so many ways to distract us and take us from the basic purpose of what we're supposed to be doing in a moment. And if we don't pay attention, we're going to end up in all sorts of crises and accidents and times of uncertainty. The scene here that happens in the Gospel of Mark is really interesting. It's very early in the Gospel of Mark. Word is obviously already getting out about Jesus. He's in the area. He's doing healings. It says people are bringing people to him. It goes into the late hours of him healing people. And, and then eventually he, he departs from them to go get some rest. It's not because he ran out of people to help. You know, I, I'm certain there's somebody who was still in line and, and, and they're like, ah, oh, it's 1030, but like, you know, I think we should stick it out. He might come back, you know? Now, granted, they probably weren't looking at their watches because they didn't have watches back then. I don't know. If, but but they, they were there waiting to see what would happen. And Jesus left because he needed rest. And then he gets up early in the morning before the sun is even up. And he doesn't jump back into the task that, that the people have brought to him, right? Instead, he goes and finds a place of solitude and prays. Which I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I have had the thought, why did Jesus have to pray? Wasn't that, you know, did you need to, and I just think it must be something in that becoming fully human as well that needed to access that connection with the divine in the same way that we do. I also believe, though, that there's some things that Jesus did in his ministry, not because he had to, but because he was showing us. He was demonstrating what it was to be faithful and obedient in our lives in relationship with God. And so he found time. Now, the world wanted to set other priorities, be busy. The, the other disciples show up like, Jesus, come on, come on, we gotta go. There's a whole bunch of people out there. They're waiting for you. We gotta go. Come on. It's time. Let's go, Jesus. Time off. Let's go. But Jesus didn't let them say, because Jesus had a sense of his purpose. He knew his why. He knew what he needed to do. He could have stayed there and just kept healing people, but he said, no, we need to go somewhere else now. Because I've been sent here to spread this message, to share this message, and it's not for me just simply to sit in this one place and do this one thing. That takes a huge sense of purpose, of knowing the why in your life, to walk away from a situation where you know there was a morning line to see this great teacher and healer. But he did it anyway because he had that inner sense of purpose. This is something that's important for us to develop in our own lives of faith as well. Last week, we talked a little bit about all these costumes we put on, these different things that we do in our lives, but it doesn't really, it's not the same thing as our inner identity of who we are 
our identity in Christ. Well, the thing that can happen to us is that in this world, we get so busy that we make the things that we do who we are, and furthermore, we make the things that we do set our purpose. And we're intended to understand our identity to understand our purpose, and then to live that out through the things that we do. We we don't have to throw away our sense of calling to a particular profession or a particular way that we serve in in our community or or a particular role we play in our family. We're not meant to throw that away, but that is not our why. That is our how. That is our what. Our why is that, that inner purpose that inner sense of what we are made for, what we are meant to do. But that is very hard for us to cultivate because we don't seem to put importance on taking time in our lives to reset this sense of purpose, of the why in our lives. A lot of people will say like, I'm, you know, I know that I should be praying every day, but I'm too busy to pray. I would say you're too busy not to pray. And by the way, Jesus found time. You're not Jesus. You might need it. And so we have to find these times to to intentionally cultivate that connection with God and to continually renew the sense of what our purpose is, both the unified big ministry mission purpose that all who follow Jesus Christ and all who call upon the name of the Lord have together, but also the individual things. Because, let's face it, you're all different. Really different. You each have very particular ways that you've been made, gifts that you have, and, and, and it's meant to come out in different expressions. And so while there is a, uni- a, a unifying why that we have through Christ, there's also a very particular thing. Why? What are you meant to do with your life in Christ? What are, what are you meant to do? Simon Sinek uh, wrote a book about finding our why, and he talks about this exercise you can do. And this is an exercise that this has nothing to do with faith, but we're going to twist it in a little bit and turn it into something about faith. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you about this, this, uh, this secular uh, activity, because this is also, I think, possibly something that might be useful to you in your life. If you want to have a sense of what your why is, what your purpose here, here's something that you can do. Go to some of your close friends, one at a time, Maybe not family, because family might be a little too close to speak truth into your heart. Go to some close friends that you trust and ask them this question. Why are we friends? What what is it about me that we're friends? And at first, he says, at first people will say things to you, oh, well, you know, it's just because you're so kind and, and, you know, and you're always there for me, which are wonderful platitudes. But he says, when, when you get that, dig a little deeper, say, no, specifically, what, what experiences have we shared? What is it that you've seen me do that makes you think I'm, I'd be a good friend? And, and you might want to explain to them that, that you know, you're okay. Uh, you're just asking this because you're trying to get a better sense of your own purpose in life and, the, and, and what you're doing in your life. And if you go through and do this with several friends, there's a couple of things that are going to happen. First of all, they're going to start to say things that you're going to try to, to reject. Like, oh, you're just such a kind person. Oh, I'm not that kind. I'm not, you know, you're going to try to downplay it. Stop that. Just, shh, 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 shh. just let them talk. Or they're going to say things that maybe you don't like. Like, maybe they'll say something like, well, you always have something to say. Um, You're just very talkative. And you may not receive that as a positive thing. And you may feel like you need to defend yourself in that moment. Shh, 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 don't do that. Just let them talk. And as you do this with several friends, what he says is you're going to eventually start to hear some common themes. And maybe even more importantly, you're going to hear something that gives you a little bit of goosebumps or maybe makes you tear up a little bit. 
pay attention to those comments. Put them together. And what you might find out is that you can discover something about your why in this world by the way that you naturally are impacting the lives of others. It's coming out of you. Your why is being expressed even when you're not fully aware of it. And so I think we can do a similar thing with our faith. I think in the same token, you can go to people, fellow Christians, people that you share a faith with, and you can ask them the question, what are the, what are the gifts that you think God has given me? What, what is it you think God has given me? They're going to end up talking about things that they see in you, that they see that you do. And again, you're going to want to interrupt them. Shh, 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 shh. Don't, don't do that. Let them go. Invite them to go deeper. And listen for those things that are common and those things that strike a chord in your heart. And it'll give you a hint as to how those gifts of God are being expressed in your life. It doesn't have to be something fantastic, amazing, and huge. In fact, most of the big and important things in life are actually small, precious things. The next step, I would say, to further adapt this idea is to speak not only just to your friends, but speak with Scripture. And what I mean by that is to take those passages in our Bible, whether it's from 1 Corinthians 12 that talks about that the body has many parts, or in Ephesians where it speaks of this as well, where there are many gifts that are given, not all are given the same, and as you read those Scriptures that talk about being given gifts from God, and you pray over it as you read that scripture ask for God to reveal to you what are the gifts that you gave me what did you put inside of me what is it that I have to give in this world to believe in scripture and prayer together to reveal something to us this is something that's part of our faith and to make part of that understanding our own internal why you can hear the word from others you can hear it from the word of God and the third thing is a little exercise that we're going to do a mini version of right now. Now I know this is a, where I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and to kind of picture something with me. Now I know some of you are thinking, that's not my thing. I don't like doing that. Shh, 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 shh. We don't need to talk about that. Just go along. No one will know if you're just closing your eyes and not really doing it. So it's easy to fake this, okay? But I want to invite you to go ahead and embrace this. And I know that for some of you, some of you don't picture things in your mind really well, so it's okay just to think about it with words, too. That's, that's okay, too, okay? So right now, I invite you all, please close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that you are going to have a meeting, a get-together with Jesus Christ. Maybe when you picture it, it's you and Jesus taking a walk together in the park. Maybe it's sitting at a coffee shop. Maybe it's standing somewhere in your home, or perhaps it's even here at church. But I want you to try to bring up a very real picture or imagination through words of what this looks like. I want you to think about the clothes that Jesus is wearing. Maybe it's modern clothes. Maybe it's from biblical times. But what, what is it that you picture? The color, the folds of the material, how Jesus is sitting or standing or walking. I want you to picture his hair. What's the color? I want you to picture the expression on his face. What does it say? What do you see in his eyes and the expression of his face? And now within this very real moment of picturing this, I want you to imagine that Jesus says to you, what have you done with all of the gifts and talents 
and passions and interests that have been placed within your heart from the moment you were made. What have you done with all that has been given to you? Now, I realize for some of you, you might be having feelings of defensiveness, hearing a question, oh, I'm being convicted. But remember the words of Scripture. Jesus came to this world not to condemn this world, but to save it. This, this question from Jesus is not a condemnation. It's not a gotcha moment. It is an invitation for you to reflect on what you have done with all that God has given to you. What do you imagine yourself saying in response? Open your eyes. Taking some time to do this exercise, real time, giving yourself time to really embed into this is an opportunity for you to reveal what it is that is pouring out of you through your spirit, through your faith, through your life. Again, it doesn't have to sound like something amazing that they would make a a movie about or tell stories for generations around campfires. But the impact that we are called to have in this life, the calling that we have, the great why for us as an individual is often, again, expressed in small, precious moments. Once you understand your why and your purpose as a, as a spiritual being, as a person of faith, then when things get crazy and crash around you, something inside of you will know which way to turn. And you will get through these things Because you have a purpose. Because you have an understanding of how God has made you and what God intends to do for this world through you. And every single one of you has this to discover. May God be glorified by all that God pours out into this world through you. Hallelujah. Amen.